So the biggest thing for him is just it's another game, go play, have a few snaps, hopefully the emotions come out of it, and he's just locked in and doing his job. For them to want to spend that money and buy tickets in another stadium to come watch us play, I mean, it, it, touch, on, it touch on for me. He's at the 10-yard line, puts his head down, dives for the pylon, touchdown, Max Johnson! It's a beautiful Saturday here at Kyle Field. I want y'all to feel this today, man. Trust yourself right now. Let go have fun. Turn it loose. The term off week can be a bit misleading. The Texas A&M Aggies have to stay on their game. Everybody okay back behind the lights? All right, let's see the red light on. So, Coach, whenever you're ready. Right. Uh, got to get back to a game week. Uh, South Carolina this week had three really good practices last week. Got some uh, really good fundamental work and execution stuff done. Uh, and that's what execution is, doing ordinary things at a high level and just consistently doing them and reemphasize that. Got to work on some schemes of upcoming opponents for uh, uh, the rest of the five weeks, whether we had to up little things from all different guys that did do different things to make sure you get them introduced so when the game week comes, it's a little different. So we did some of that. And had three really good interject, really physical practices. Guys did a good job, and we look forward to that. Get back to Monday, get back to our game week, uh, going to play South Carolina. I just feel like the main thing that uh, – that we really worked on was uh, finishing, you know what I'm saying, and really, really diving into how we can finish. Um, so incorporating like different, not even different drills, but just different mindsets that we go into practice, you know what I'm saying? We coming out for this break, let's treat this like second quarter, or we coming off for this break, let's treat this as coming out of second half, you know what I'm saying? So it's just things like that and really just coming together and bonding as a team. You know, we played seven straight weeks coming into this bye week. Uh, so so we had a chance for some guys to get healthy, um, which I think is huge, you know. Anytime they have to play seven weeks in a row of college football, no matter how you know strong or athletic you are, your body's gonna be banged up. This is your chance to kind of, you know, take off a little bit of that body soreness that you've had, you know, getting a, a, they got two days off, which is huge. Like just, you know, we're still out there grinding, we're still out there working hard, but getting a day or two, you know, get our feet back underneath us and get in the cold tubs and get in the training room and stay in there all day. If you go too much healing and your body go, your body gets conditioned to go within contact. I hate going without three days without contact. Once it goes over three days without contact, which sometimes that's that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that Monday coming back, sometimes you're sluggish at the beginning of the week. Your body gets conditioned that too, so it's a fine line. You got to keep that going, but the guys that need to be healed have to be healed. Resting up for the rest of the season is important, but what does one do with the one game day with no game? For me, it was definitely a little different. Uh, I felt a little weird uh, trying to turn on the TV. Uh, especially on that Saturday because it felt like I was supposed to be there playing, you know what I'm saying, or be doing something, and I was in the house. So I was like, um, my family and them, they was watching football all day, but I was just watching film. I did the ultimate getaway. Um, so my <laughs> sister, shout out to Mackenzie and Grayson, uh, they got married in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So I got to fly um, to Jackson Hole with my fiance and my family um, and go spend time up there in the mountains. I was not doing anything with football. I sat on a rocking chair and looked over the mountains of Jackson Hole and the Grand Tetons. Well, everybody was recruiting. Everybody was, you know, getting back that day. And then that day, hopefully, they could spend with their family and your and your kids and, and that type of thing. And you, you know, you sit down and like I say, watch a little bit of football. I actually didn't see a lot of football. You know what I mean? So here, just with the kids and, and family, and my wife and. And just talk and actually watch some different things and did, did some things around the house and you know, watch a little bit of ball, just kind of relaxed. Yeah, solid. Yeah, so in the spring from a bachelor party, Will is a, a groomsman. Diego bachelor party. We're going to go out to San Ysidro, Texas and go to an exotic game ranch and uh, try to get something with our bows there, see what happens. Um, 
But this is kind of what the prep is for now, like trying to you know be prepared for deer season. Like obviously that just kind of came in season. Like obviously love. Regardless, I'm gonna get something with my bow. Yeah. I... Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the football crib. You know, my po uh, the interview things we have on Monday where I was like, yeah, was gonna pull it out. And they didn't pull it out. So that yeah, sucks, okay. but it's all right. So trying to like plan with Mallory to where like we can get out to you know, like the venue to like go to like one of their open houses or something, but we can like go try the food and then like try the wedding cakes and like see like, cause I, I want to be a part of it. You know what I mean? Like I don't want it to just be like, there's like this stigma where it's like, oh, she's just going to do everything. I'm gonna go. And it's like, no, like I want to help her out. Cause she's got her own stuff, bro. She's in a master's student. Like she's basically working like a full-time job. And so we're trying to like balance. And so like she'll like FaceTime me in between classes and like knock some stuff out. I'm thinking on like food and menu items and stuff like that. Like what we want to do, um, you know, we'll like look at like different centerpieces and stuff like that that we like. Thankfully though, the venue that we got is stinking beautiful. And it's like our dream venue. So it, it really worked out, so. Max Wright has his passions with the bow and on the gridiron. Now that he's tying the knot, he has a new challenge, wedding planning with fiance Mallory. I'm not really sure what he's doing in regards to wedding planning, <laughs> but <laughs> do you know? There may be some last minute things. I mean, Max's ability to wedding plan. Well, truth be told, we put him in charge of the DJ and that was like the first thing we booked. And so honestly, he got his task done. Every single day he'll call me or call my mom because my mom's like my wedding planner and it's like, what can I do today for the wedding? And most of the time it's like, oh, nothing yet, but hopefully we'll figure out something soon, but he's been incredible. Try to help as much as I can, but I, uh, I picked the DJ. So I got the DJ, I got the DJ scheduled, so I was proud of myself for that. That was my helping out point. Um, but I try to help her out in any way I can, whether it's just like making a phone call for her, or, you know, trying to like pick out some like different colors and stuff. They met at A&M in a true testament to the Aggie network and share a bond through one of the school's core values, selfless service. Met her my freshman year and we became really close friends, um, you know, and that was my first weekend, I think, in College Station. I met Mallory and from then we were friends. Ended up going on a mission trip together um, to the Dominican Republic through uh, Mikado and the team and stuff and all those uh, athletics. And uh, that's whenever I started to kind of you know, see a really cool side of her, the heart that she has um, for helping people. And, you know, she's just, she's an amazing person. Just the fact that he's found somebody like Mallory, you know, yeah. I mean, we, and a and ultimately was a part of that. So they both came here. The fact that they could, I mean, to be here on the field, I mean, and do that was, I don't think a lot of people get to do that. My plan was, I was like, okay, I, I hadn't taken grad pictures yet from graduating almost a year and a half ago. He tells me that we're taking graduation pictures for him, which I believed because we didn't take any for him and he was in all of mine. Then we arrive at Kyle Field and I see Max like standing out there and there were roses. I don't even think it hit me yet until I like finally, I think I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, is what is happening? Is this happening? Is this happening? And I didn't want to be wrong either. So I wasn't gonna like, are you proposing? It was literally just the most incredible moment of my life. They got the big board involved and, yeah, and then we went around campus and took some pictures, did some stuff, so it was really cool. His path in the game has not come without speed bumps. At times he's been slowed, but his drive and desire wouldn't allow him to be stopped. I mean, as soon as he, you know, could, yeah, as far I mean, as we he was remember. two years old, had a ball in his hand. We held off letting him play football for a little bit after his injury that he had in, you know, first grade. So we thought, well, let's yeah. just, you know, let you get healed. And he was good. So he didn't really start playing football until fourth grade and uh, played up. And then, um, good play, yes. yeah, again, we thought baseball was going to be his path. It really did. It is tough. I mean, I watched him go through two ACL, you know, and it's, he just doesn't back down, and he he definitely is not a quitter. He's overcome a lot, um, but he also, he perseveres. And I mean, A&M has been so incredible for him. I mean, obviously he met Mallory, and I mean, this entire organization and family has been such a blessing, not only to Max, but to us, and we didn't go here. There's no guarantees, but thankfully I'm grateful for Coach Fisher standing by him. I couldn't live without Max. I couldn't see a future without Max. Like every single part of my life that was 
what I wanted to happen involved Max in it. And so he's just goofy and he's so loving and so caring and so thoughtful. One of the most intentional people that I've ever experienced, like somehow he makes me feel like the most important person in the world while also doing that to all of his friends, to his family, to his teammates, to his coaches. And so I would say that you get the same Max that I get genuinely. He's just a really genuine person, but maybe he talks a little bit cool with his friends or something like that. So maybe I don't maybe I don't see that. But I do see when he gets around and I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> the Pulse, Texas AM football is presented by 44 Farms the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M Athletics. <laughs> Say goodbye to the bye week. It's game on and the Gamecocks are in town. Texas A&M and South Carolina are getting an early start no worries, Kyle Field is always rocking and will serve as the perfect wake-up call. But she's not with us. They got us not with us. Hey, man, we got five more games left. This is the last stretch. This is the last stretch, man. What you going to do about it? What you going to do to change the narrative? How you going to finish your story, man? Go out, play hard for each other. Play for the man next to you. Look around you, man. That was a great opportunity to get to play, man. Three things we talked about. Urgency. You gotta have the urgency right off the bat, and that urgency's gotta stay throughout the game. Focus, that focus that allows us to do that. And at the end of the day, that competitive drive, man. You gotta have that competitive drive to push it through no matter what the serve. There's gonna be good things, bad things happen in this game. Don't let up, don't give up. Listen, guys, it's time for us to become what we can become. It's time for us to become what we can become. Get over it, quit worrying about anything else. All you can focus on is today, the situations that are there. Love, trust, and believe in each other. You play for yourself, your family and your teammates and everybody you love, trust, and believe in. You understand? That's what it gets down to. What matters in this room, the care you have in this room, turn it loose. Turn it loose. Know the guy across from you, you've got the same look in his eye you got in yours. That's that brotherhood in what you got. There's nothing like it on the team, man. Now, let's go be what we can become and be one hell of a football team, okay? Come on out now. You gotta make it happen. You gotta make it happen. Family on three, family on me. One, two, three. Come on. The Aggies and the South Carolina Gamecocks. From a sold out Kyle Field. Foot to ball. Owens, three yards deep in the end zone, and he's bringing it out to the right side in between the numbers to the 17 yard line. It's the defenses that set their alarm. They're getting the best of the opposing offenses in the opening quarter. Eventually, it's Carolina that shakes off the cobwebs first. It's a Wildcat to Joyner on the right side to the two yard line. And now it's a fourth and goal. Looks like from they the may two. go for it. They're not sending the field goal team out there. Pistol formation with Anderson behind Rattler. And now Joyner is going to take the shotgun. Rattler goes out. Joyner runs right side. Touchdown, South Carolina. AM is down, and they don't want to let the Gamecocks get too far away. The defense has to halt. Carolina's momentum. Take care of yourself. Find a way to get the ball back. High snap to Rattler. Pressure coming. Throws it away. He's still in the tackle box. There's nobody when he over there. It to the sideline. There's nobody near it. Intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. Offense number seven. Second and 24. Fake the swing pass. Now he's going to use his legs and slide to the 10 yard line. Scream. Joiner. High and upended by Cooper at the 14 yard line. They'll be forced to punt it away, but a great play by Edge Cooper. Third five for Max Johnson. Quick toss got Evan Stewart, but there's a flag down behind the play. Evan makes the catch for a first down. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense. Number seven. He's going to be in good field position. They're going to be all the way down around the 20-yard line. Pistol formation. Owens behind Johnson. Two receivers each side. Reuben runs it. Reuben right up the middle. Touchdown, Reuben Owens from 14 yards. 7-7. Seven, seven. Aggies and Gamecocks are tied. Oh, no, I that. It's on the left side. Pistol formation with DeCarry and Joyner. Rattler spins to his left, throws on the run, incomplete, and it may have been deflected before it got it to the get. Yeah, Bryce Anderson, I think you're right. I think he got a hand on it. Shotgun snap, fell high. Pressure coming. A voice, Stewart, thrown up in the air towards the Aggie sideline. There's no one there either. He stayed in the tackle box, retreating. So the Aggies 
on their last drive from the 45. This is from South Carolina's 48. Snap to Max, eye high. Pressure coming up the middle, throws. Caught at the 39. Out goes Layden Robinson wow. to push. He got close to the first down. He may have gotten it. Let's see where they mark Let's this ball. Let's see where they mark it. Center judge has it at the 39. They're going to go for it. Two for two on fourth downs. And Max will take it himself. Push from behind. Move those chains. Third down. Shotgun snap. Max. Zip. Caught. Anias. Steps back to his left. Inside the numbers. Now to the sideline. 10. Eight yard line for Anias. High formation. Overloaded right side. Give to Amari at the goal line. Touchdown. Amari Daniels. Second and 10 from their own 38. Pressure coming. And he throws it into the sideline. There's I, nobody there. This could be his third of the half. Yes. It is. Pressure from his left. Oh, Diggs got him! Sack! Fidel! Max gets the snap, fakes to Ruben. He's got Anias at the 20, down the right sideline, 10, cuts back middle of the field, cuts back again, Anias, touchdown! Yes! One play, 42 yards, Anias is magic! Halftime, Aggies 21, South Carolina, 7. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Uh, we've been here before. We've been here before. Learn from your lesson. Learn from your lesson. Don't let things happen again and again. Only, only crazy people do that, okay? You understand the urgency we got to start the half with. You understand the focus we got to have the whole half, and I need that competitive spirit. Oh, because well, listen, they got, they got the best of us in the beginning. Your competitive spirit, your focus, your determination to keep playing one play got you right back to where you went. That's a lot of maturity. Now, don't let that slide, man. Don't take it for granted. Understand what you just did. Replicate it over and over and over and over. Don't get bored being good. Don't get bored being in contain. Don't be bored putting your hat in the right place. We take the next step right here, become what we can become. You understand me? You understand me? Yes, sir. Let's go get the rest right here. Oh, and finish on three. One, two, three. Finish. South Carolina scores first in the right, second half right. with a 49 yard field goal. It's 21 10, Aggies. The offense gets moving. Max Johnson delivers complete at the 30. Splitting two defenders, oh. Noah Thomas with his first catch. Play action fake, Max pocket, pressure from his left, on it, drag to Jake Johnson, undercut the 43 yard line, a 12 yard gain. Toss Ruben Owens. Ruben trying to get outside and does into South Carolina territory. I was gonna say too high, but it's never too high for Noah Thomas who makes the catch. The deep back is Owens, it's a fake to him. Max, a little flick, caught by Max Wright, and he dances inside the 33-yard line. The snap to Max Johnson, quickly delivered across the middle. Evan Stewart with the catch. Evans at the 20-yard line. Max rolls left, throws to score. Max Wright, did he get his foot down? Incomplete, he's out of bounds. They're going to review this. The previous play is under further review. The first replay he I said have. no on the pylon cam. He may have. Me. No. Ah! You can see how they could miss this. Correct. Go, it was so fast. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think he got his foot down. After review. Turn that after all that we saw. I'm, I'm shocked. Oh, 12 plays so far, 75 yards, and Randy Bond is coming on. Good. Aggies have a 24 to 10 lead. Carolina keeps coming and cuts their deficit to one score. Big plays on both sides are a must if AM is to put this one away. The snap to Max Johnson. Fires right side. That is complete spinning and turning and getting down the right sideline. Over midfield and completes.
Now from the pistol, Amari right side, through the hole, and through the gap, second level, and more! 15-yard line, Amari Daniels! Randy Bond owns one field goal today. 24-17, Texas A&M. He's at a 27-17 lead. Anderson stutter step, and when he stopped, he was hit. And Isaiah rakes in on that tackle. Throws down the right side for Legat. Incomplete. Low snap to Rattler. Goes down and gets it across the middle. Simon hit at the 34. Tackled at the 35. He's a yard shy. More than two. Low snap to Rattler. Fumble. And they're not going to get it. Turned over on down. Back at the 33. I mean, it was doomed from the start. Aggies end up making the necessary plays and pick up a much needed SEC win. They top Carolina 30 to 17. Sure. Hey. Woo! Giga, baby! Woo! Woo! All right, listen. First of all, congratulations. Any win is a great one. That's a good win. Way to bounce back. We had two heartbreakers. We, we, we made that one tough, but what we learned to do is make key plays and key moments, okay? We learned to keep playing, you had focus. But I will say this, we had them and could have put them out, and we didn't, didn't finish some drives on offense and defense in the first couple drives was out there. In the second half, we what? We got it back in there and give them some hope, right? right. And it's little things, leverages, tackling, and at the end there a couple times, they're pushing the pile on us, we ain't knocking the pile back. And offense, we could put it away a couple times uh, after we got to stop on and we end up kicking field goals. You know what I mean? Getting touchdowns, getting up three scores. But we got to learn from that, okay? We got to learn from that and learn to take hope out from the other team, okay? But it's a great win. It was a physical game. That 10 day come in here, had some really good players. You guys did what you had to do to get a win. We got four games left. That's the first to the five. 20% <clears throat> done. You got me? We got the next one, one at a time. And we got to be on time, stretch and stride. We got a treatment at 11, stretch and stride at 12. Everybody be there, be on time. And some of you guys, I'm mad a week ago, my role wasn't big. All of a sudden, it became big this week. Keep being, be ready. There's a lot of ball left. You don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be a hell of a year. We're going to grow from this one at a time. We're going to have a hell of a football season. Good. Yeah, we all three, one, two, three, four. This Saturday brings celebration, but Monday is coming. Back to work and back on the road this weekend at Mississippi. Really good team. Played well. I think they're 6-1, 7-1 now. Uh, defense gets better and better each week. They're doing a really good job. Uh, offensively, of course, there's going to be no huddle going fast. Still focus on running the football. It's run the football, quarterback run, quarterback cheat plays. He beats you with his legs. Sh uh, shot plays down the field, high percentage things in which they do. Like we've been in two battles the last two years that come down to the end. We up there, we drop a ball in the fourth quarter to go ahead and to put it up, and we're going ahead up there. And then down here, we're 31, and it's back and forth. It ends up being 31-28. They pop a big run. They're late. That they got us. And uh, they're a good football team, and uh, uh, we need to go play a good game. It would be a huge, huge road win for us and, and uh, part of the goals we have set for the second half of the season. I mean, all the other months get you put up for that. And whether you're going for a championship aspiration or just a great season, we can still have one heck of a season, and November really matters.